at that point in time, there were those candidates who were waiting to do national examinations. So those uh, examinations as well were suspended. When you come to colleges and universities, that meant delayed completion of education uh, and uh, the programs that had been set for the year 2020. Those who are set to graduate also meant that they had to have delayed graduations because uh, some businesses were closed down, which meant that even parents who could pay fees, they had no source of income. And generally also mental health issues increased. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the young girls, especially getting pregnant and even some parents marrying them off at an early age because of this impact? Parents lost their uh, sources of livelihoods. They lost their incomes because even small businesses were closed down. Um, that also meant they are looking for other ways that they can uh, put food on the table. And in Africa, you know, girls are married off and uh, in exchange for dowry. So young girls were married off. Um, teenage pregnancies in increased. And um, that lack of teacher, pupil, physical interaction every day, that also ensures discipline uh, and proper engagement, you know. Moral up upbringing, I know, can be done at home, but I think teachers spend so much time with children, and children respect their teachers as role models. Give us some specifics on how the pandemic has impacted learning at Kenyatta University, where you teach. The impact of COVID-19 affected every, um, all learning institutions. A loss of six months to students, um, and at that time, uh, since the closure was uh, sudden, imminent, you know, the backup plan was not in place at the time. And uh, when you're dealing with other graduate students, you know, graduate students, uh, postgraduate students, that was um, very many students leaving at the same time. They were not, they had not completed their programs. They could not find jobs. They could not find internships, there was a confinement, there were curfews. All these restrictions affected everyone. So students were there at home with no assignment, no work to do. Then on the lecturers and the professors side, work started remotely. Members of staff were retrained for the first time, I must say, people who have taught physically for 30, 40 years had to learn new digital technology, new methodologies of uh, teaching, preparation of um, class materials or uh, learning materials online in January 2021. This is what is happening. We have half of the population of the university because it's quite large. First years and fourth years, you know, the beginners and the finalists are on campus learning physically. Then the second years and third years are at home uh, taking their lessons remotely, and they are also catching up. Talk to us about the challenges now of online learning for both the students and the lecturers. Uh -huh. So when you think about electricity connection, when you think about it, internet service provision, not every village way back in the counties, you know, what we call marginalized areas, has the benefit of having uh, internet connectivity. Let us alone electricity. Still, that internet has to be paid for. Students require bundles, you know, airtime to be able to attend a class. So again, that has, a, has an impact on um, the finances at the family level. There is also online examinations. So some students would start perhaps taking a cut, then power goes, you know, disappears. So they have, they, they, you know, they would not be able to, sur I mean, to submit their work on time or even a final examination. Will there be remedial classes for students who are not able to catch up? They will have a chance to come to the campus physically to make up for the time lost so that there is no exclusivity of students because of marginalization of technology.